But the Bible itself says there's only one mediator. You go right to Jesus. And he looked at the verse and he went, <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand why um, many people are praying to saints when Jesus is the mediator. There's only one mediator between God. Hello everyone, I'm Joseph Dinesh, a Catholic commentator from Sydney, Australia. In today's video, let's chat about something that's been troubling the minds of many of our Protestant friends. That is, why do Catholics pray to saints when the Bible clearly states that Jesus is the only mediator between God and man? This topic presented itself when I recently came across a video of Frank Turk, a well-known Christian apologist from the States, talking about this very issue. So we are going to analyze what he's saying and then take the help of the great Bishop Robert Barron and Father Mike Schmitz to get the Catholic perspective. Let's get started. The reason why I wanted to make this video was to address one of the fundamental difference between how Protestants and Catholics view the relationship between God and human beings. Well, Protestants strongly believe that any glory given to man is a glory taken away from God. In essence, believing God and man are in competition with each other. If you observe closely, all the solas of the Protestant Reformation will have a subtle connection to this concept. That's why the reformers said, only faith, only grace, only scripture without acknowledging any collaboration from human beings. On the contrary, Catholics firmly believe that when human beings receive glory, it ultimately reflects back to God because man and God are not in competition with each other. So now when you see the doctrines of the Catholic faith through this lens, it will all start making sense. Which is why we can boldly say, faith and action, grace and cooperation, God and the intercession of saints, acknowledging the role of human beings all throughout. Until our Protestant friends grasp this idea of God's non-competitive nature, it might be tough for them to fully embrace any of the Catholic teaching. So in this video, I hope to shed some light on this perspective. Let's get started. In the first clip, Christian apologist Frank Turk poses this question. If the Bible clearly states that Jesus is the sole mediator between God and humanity, why do Catholics pray to saints? Why do they encourage this puzzling contradiction? Let's listen to him. And I asked uh, the Roman Catholic priest with us, I said, you know, 1 Peter 2.15, or is it 3.15? I can't remember where. Anyway, the passage says, there's one mediator between God and man, the Lord Christ Jesus. And so I asked him, I said, what do you do with this? You guys are praying to saints. But the Bible itself says there's only one mediator. You go right to Jesus. And he looked at the verse and he went, <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand why um, many people are praying to saints when Jesus is the mediator. There's only one mediator between God. It's not surprising that as a Protestant apologist, Frank Turk has not yet understood or embraced the idea of God's non-competitive nature. Now, rather than citing multiple scripture verses in support of the intercession of saints, I defer to Bishop Robert Barron to clearly explain the concept that God is not in competition with humanity. Let's listen to him. That God exists in such a way that he doesn't stand competitively over and against his creation as though it's a zero-sum game. If I pay attention to creation, I not pay attention to God, but rather delights in involving his creation in his own uh, providential design. We get the privilege of cooperating with God's uh, providential purpose. Part of that now comes in with prayer. Does God deign in his wisdom and love to give some of his graces precisely through the intercession of certain figures who cooperate with his grace? And the answer to that is yes. Two important things that we need to take away from Bishop Barron's explanation are, first, God does not compete with his creation or with humanity because nothing can exist independently of God as he is the very essence of existence itself. Therefore, when human beings participate in acts such as praying for others or asking for others' prayers, it does not detract from God's glory, but rather reflects his glory shining through his human creation. That's why St. Irenaeus said, the glory of God is a human being fully alive. Second, God delights in working with secondary causes to achieve his purposes through the natural processes and actions of human beings rather than through direct intervention or working through supernatural miracles all the time. This reflects God's desire to involve his creation in his divine plan and to honor the inherent capabilities and responsibilities he has given to humanity. Now, having explained this, I also want to point out the inconsistency among Protestants who oppose the intercession of saints. Have you observed that they don't seem to have any reservations when seeking prayers from pastors, friends 
and family members or when they themselves engage in spreading the gospel or doing an act of service for those in need in all these instances our protestant friends readily accept the idea of co-mediation alongside jesus however when it comes to the intercession of saints they suddenly have an issue let's hear father mike schmitz address this inconsistency well we say of course jesus is the one mediator between god and man he is the one the only one who gives us access to the father but as we all know Jesus has enlisted a whole host of co-workers, hasn't he? Scripture even talks about this, this we've become co-workers with Christ. And in that, whenever you've taught someone about Jesus, you were a mediator of the teaching of Jesus. Whenever you've prayed with someone, you were a mediator of God's grace in a certain way. Whenever you even gave someone a Bible or shared a link like to a video like this, you became a mediator of part of God's truth, part of God's word, part of God's wisdom, part of God's life. Now, Jesus is the one mediator between God and man of salvation. But again, as I said, he's enlisted a whole host of brothers and sisters, co-workers, and he's commissioned us to be co-mediators. And I say that in a very specific term, with him. So now my question to our Protestant friends is, why are you not applying the same logic that you do with saints to human situations? Well, if you do, Do you know how unreasonable it will sound? Let me illustrate that for you. If someone asks you to pray for them, you should say, "Why don't you directly pray to Jesus?" If someone asks you to evangelize, you should say, "Let Jesus himself come down and evangelize everyone." If someone asks you for help, you should say, "Go ask Jesus directly. Why are you asking me?" I hope you get my point. We can't selectively choose the idea of co-mediation. Now, before you bring up the argument that saints are dead while humans are alive, I urge you to first fully grasp this concept of God's non-competitive nature and we can discuss the topic of saints being dead in a separate video. Finally, I would like to wrap up this discussion by highlighting these three examples from the scripture that illustrate God working through secondary causes. First is the story of Moses and the burning bush in the book of Exodus. In this narrative, God chooses to reveal himself to Moses through a burning bush that miraculously remains unconsumed by the flames. Instead of simply appearing to Moses in a direct and a miraculous manner, God uses this natural element as a medium to communicate his divine presence and purpose to Moses. Another example is the story of Esther in the Old Testament. God's presence and intervention are not explicitly mentioned in the book, yet is providential and is evident throughout the narrative. God works through Esther's courage, wisdom and actions to deliver his people from destruction. orchestrating events behind the scenes to ensure their safety in the new testament the story of the virgin mary's role in the incarnation of jesus exemplifies god working through secondary causes mary's willingness to cooperate with god's plan by consenting to become the mother of jesus demonstrates how god chooses to work through human beings to accomplish his divine purposes i hope this video was helpful let me know your thoughts in the comment section god bless you